Hello, my name is Patrick Webb, and we're continuing our ongoing series on the chemistry of plaster in heritage building, talking about a special type of lime, natural hydraulic lime. And uh, what makes it so special? Well, a lot of it has to do with that middle word there, hydraulic, as opposed to an air drying lime. Um, the hydraulic lime is actually set with the presence of water, and that can be a valuable characteristic. Well, where do natural hydraulic limes come from? Why are they different than regular, regular lime? Well, they start off the same way, actually. Um, same type of sedimentary limestone beds. But, at some point in time, they had an infiltration of active, or what they call amorphous silica. Well, silica typically is not a very reactive um, product. It's usually comes in the form of some sort of crystal, like quartz, um, which is actually what we throw into lime as an aggregate in many cases. But um, this silica has, um, sometimes there can be various factors, but sometimes due to volcanic activity, um, where they got very, very hot, so they didn't, and they cooled very quickly, so they didn't really have a ch chance to crystallize like they normally would, uh, perhaps in the same type of events that they were crushed or, or blown out of a volcano. They might have been very, very fine, so they precipitate as an ash. And uh, limestone is porous, so as this material moves into the, uh, the porous limestone over geological time, you know, it gets stuck in the capillary system of, of limestone. And it's just waiting. Um, right at that point in time, you have two inert materials. You have this amorphous silica ready to react, but you have limestone, which um, is a pretty stable material and is non-reactive. So that's, uh, that's what we're given. Uh, we encounter this material, and um, as usual, we begin to, to bake it, and that's where we get to the manufacturing stage. Um, I'll just write down real quick uh, the silicon dioxide uh, plus the calcium carbonate. That's what nature has given us, and I'll just put in active here. So um, it has this very special infiltration. Uh, so when we cook these materials together, slightly higher temperature than uh, regular lime, somewhere around the thousand degree Celsius mark, or right about eighteen hundred degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the calcium starts to dissipate the CO2, that frees it up, because remember calcium oxide, the quick lime is pretty reactive too, so these guys want to get together, and that's exactly what happens, and um, creates a clinker um, of, the common name is bellite, and uh, it's what they call a polymorphic bellite, which happens at these higher temperatures, and um, essentially they fuse. Calcium disilicate is the term for that. And they call it disilicate because it's basically two of these molecules that get together. Chemist notation for that, and the way you'll see it, and it's probably more like C2S. The C is not carbon in this case, S is not sulfur. That's standing for calcium disilicate. Alright, so uh, now we have something that. Uh, it's kind of at a mid-stage, and we're going to go through the, um, the natural hydraulic lime cycle, subsequent video. Um, and there will be a further reaction when it's mixed with water. That um, calcium disilicate starts to, uh, to react further, and you get what they call a CSH uh, cementitious gel. So, there's actually a variety of different types of crystals in this family that begin growing. Um, so that is standing for calcium, silica, and then H is standing for, for water. Um, what type of properties, though, does, uh, does this create? Well, um, like we said, it's hydraulic. So that means that if you mix up, of course with your aggregates, some of these mortars or plasters, even if you had it submerged in water, um, given a, a certain amount of time, uh, it would be anywhere from a day to um, a couple of weeks, 
this material will take a, a hard chemical set. And that makes it very advantageous uh, for a variety of um, specifications, uh, particularly for areas where you have uh, uh, freeze-thaw cycles. Or you're expecting a frost. Perhaps you're doing a stucco and there's a winter storm coming. Um, you have a window of time to work, a few days, maybe a week. Um, that way you can proceed rapid, more rapidly with the work and uh, you know, avoid the, the troubles that would be associated with the freeze-thaw cycle. Um, also, um, these natural hydraulic lines are more resistant um, to erosion. They maintain a good deal of um, flexural strength. They're not like a Portland cement that's brittle, but at the same time, um, they have a higher compressive strength. So that makes them perfect. Typically, they're used uh, in, in exterior for that reason. So we'll uh, get a little bit uh, deeper into the, uh, the chemistry as we consider in our next video the NHL or natural hydraulic lime cycle.